Isn't that a nice little ditty? It is. One of my biggest problems is I always try to learn things that have already been done. And I forget to just sit here and muck about it, you know? Sitting here by the side of the bay. I don't know what's happening today. All my troubles are way beyond me. I've already tossed them of them away. with my stick you know and he goes dude what's your story and i'm like friendship so we've hung out for the last 27 That's hours story, Joe. What the... <laughs> well no i told him the story as the one that recognized you with the stick? no this is a different person i told someone recognized me at the concert from the sticks joe is my newest friend joe has been on the she's on the shikoku circuit he's done his 88 and how are you feeling after that 88 and then you ran into me randomly, and we and here we are at a university festival. What's that? What's that been like for you, Joe? Awesome. It's perfect serendipity. No, he just saw me walking with the stick and was like, "What's your story?" And I told him about the pilgrimage, and he's like, "Cool, I'm gonna go see Yoko Ono's doctor. You know, John Lennon's wife." So he's like, "I'm 90s in her 90s." Yeah, he visits her doctor. So he's like, "You want to come?" She with sets him like, up in a five star hotel, and he gets they. Yeah, he just held my wrist and told me so many things. Very about intuitive, me. right? It was it my it blew my mind. It was amazing. He wants to know if you're if you're liver. liver function or liver. Liver. Have you ever checked before? No. No, you should check liver, liver function. Maybe it's almost okay, but sometimes uh, liver function is a little bit weak, weaker than normal range. He told me so many things about myself. Hidden drama, go. hidden traumas. Those are the, if you get a doctor who can he's tell sharp. you, he's sharp. He's, he's sharp. sharp. It was like so, like oh my god. So, <laughs> so then I'm I gonna miss like, this guy. He's he's awesome. I'm, you guys are lucky. You'll have him back soon. Ah, he's good. So, so then we leave this <laughs> bromance. <laughs> we leave these doctors' apartment right at the appointment, and we go to get dinner. This is a This is the finest plum sake that Japan has ever produced. It has a history stretching back over 875 years. It's one of the favorite drinks of one of the original shoguns, Tokugawa. Uh, it's handcrafted with quality and care. Plums squeezed by hand. There are 378 plums in every glass. 
It is one of the finest and highest quality beverages that has ever been produced in Japan. And if you don't like it, there's something wrong with you, my friend. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> with him, this Japanese dude and an Italian guy, they're in a wasabi business together. The Italian guy used to work for a store next to the restaurant that I worked, and he worked for my boss's brother. I was like, whoa, small world. We had so much laughter. We had a couple drinks. Um, I was in New York. I was in Manhattan having a drink at a bar. I meet this girl from Jersey, and we're chatting for a bit, and things went good. She invites me back to Jersey. So I said, sure, I'll come visit. So I go take the train with her over to Jersey. I'd never been before. And we go to this bar she takes me to. And there's this guy she introduces me to. I forget his name, but maybe Hi. it's Jimmy or something. Jimmy, come She goes, this is my friend Jimmy. And I go, Jimmy, I haven't seen you in years. And he doesn't even break. He goes, Joe. And he comes and gives me a hug. We've never met each other before. We're just messing with her. And she goes, you guys know each other? And I go, we went to elementary school back together. And he goes, yes, Castle Rock High. And I'm like, dude, Castle Rock High. Remember Mrs. Fritchie's car? She goes, oh, she was so terrible. I said, oh, I know, me too. And this girl is losing her mind. She's like, I can't believe you guys know each other. How did... Wait, you grew up in Pennsylvania? I was like, yeah, I went to Pennsylvania for a little while too. It's a long story. Anyways, <laughs> we had her going on for like two minutes on the hook. And then finally we told her, I'm just kidding. I never met this guy. I'm Joe. It's so really nice to meet you. Her mind was blown. It was okay. amazing. Oh my God. I want to do that next time I meet someone. <laughs> it's fun, man. It's fun. Toe, toe thumping. Two people doing okay, messing okay, with okay, someone. What, 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 it's, it's a thing. You just yes. made it a How thing. How do you kill that one guy? Toe thump. C O. How do you spell it? Co hyphen. T H U M P. Oh, he did the spelling for me, and that's I what you, I needed man. because you know I'm not native. <laughs> <laughs> but you might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> might be. I was catching a bus. I was in uh, Brussels, and it was a bus. I don't remember where I was going, but I know this guy walks up to me, and he says, uh, "He's from Brussels, so I speak a lot of French there." He goes. Uh, Excusez-moi, monsieur, in really bad French. She goes, parlez-vous um, English? And I said, yeah, I speak English. She goes, oh, amazing. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> is this bus is this bus going to Amsterdam? And I said, uh, no, I think this bus is going to Frankfurt. I think if you want the bus to Amsterdam, you need to take, try that bus there, but maybe ask the driver, I don't know. And the guy goes, okay, merci beaucoup, thank you. Your English is really good, by the way. And he leaves, I'm like, yeah, I'm American, dude, same as you. <laughs> I should grow a mustache more often. I look European, this is great. You just wow. say, I graduated, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> you say it, right? This is what I tried to say. You said that. Then we went out to this. Oh, I've missed the concert thing completely. Before that, we went to a festival at the university. They had like taiko drums and then they had like cool dances. We met some of the cool dancers. They After the dinner with the business meeting guys to go to this like it felt like an indoor new york apartment style nightclub kind of a thing where there's like a dj and like there's a fridge and a microwave and you can tell there's probably a loft bed up there but they, they like turned it into a dance floor for the night <laughs> Basically, hip hop, house, R and B, funk, till five in the morning. Uh, I got a guest DJ from Philly, 
Mm. Uh, Skeem Richards, okay. uh, Pioneer Hip Hop. Um, we also have live performance, Natural, Vernon, uh, bass, keyboard, rapper Gizmo from Hamamatsu, and they're doing a session with live dancers. So we've got lots of live performances going on, also some live painting. And then there's a, a collector who does who does a lot of collecting of like <laughs> 90s uh, hip hop paraphernalia, something like that, amazing. and also an artist uh, just showing some of their work. And so probably like 40 people in there by the big peak of it or something. So we're all kicking it, we're dancing, we go get kebab, and then me and this guy, he's like, <laughs> you can come crash at my place if you want to. And I was like, okay. He's <laughs> like, but we gotta make a decision because the last train's at 11.40 p.m. and the first train in the morning is at 5 a.m. So we're sitting there, we're having a great time, we're chatting with all these cool people, mm -hmm. and then like look at the phone, it's like 11.20, and I'm like, oh. mm -hmm. I look at Ken, I'm like, I don't know, what are we doing, what are we doing? <laughs> and we just decide, I'm like, how much would a taxi be to your place? And like, it's probably like 10,000, it's like 5,000 a piece, it's like 40 bucks each. I'm like, okay, that's mm -hmm. steep, yeah, because it's a far ride, so I'm like, I can do it if you can do it. He's like, I can mm. do it. So we just rock through the whole night. We meet so many people, play music on the streets. Oh, that's good. Is it? That's really good. Mm, it's a kick to it too. Sweet. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, I will follow my t-shirts. I'm doing a YouTube video, something like that. Something like that. Hi guys, it's Alex. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Start off with smart you are Alex? But I actually had like a, <laughs> not, not even you. a flip phone, just like oh, okay. it was just this yeah. tiny so, ass. You don't look like yeah. 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 We're each other. Yeah. You're Alex. Yeah. Yeah. You're it's Ken. It's fucking awesome. She's and then Joe. Stella. She's Joe. I had that. She's Joe. <laughs> Joe. I'm Joe. Joe Spella. Do you know enough about each other to imitate each other now? That's what she wants to do. I have a stick. <laughs> yeah, that works. I have a stick. Did a stick. And I have a story. Give so this story. one time, I went to... You have two minutes though. Okay, I, ha I went up a hill with my ex-girlfriend. We took a laptop and we fucking destroyed it. Oh. Because we looked it's like We had a gun. It was a real gun. It just shot, it just shot like metal battles, you know. <laughs> oh my God. And, like, it would hurt you if... But it, was there any crumping? But you wouldn't die. No, you wouldn't no die. Crumping, no crumping. No, 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 no. It, like it would hurt your eye, no. <laughs> Go into your eye. So yeah, we nasty. shot it and we cracked up the screen. And then she had like boots that like had a metal like oh, thing oh, right oh, here. Oh. So she went and she ran towards the computer, just kicked and ran down the hill like. That is so Joe. You know. Yeah, that's you, I just you just nailed you nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. How did you do that? Okay, now you got Spella. He's gonna do Spella. Spella. Oh my God, Lake Bled is like my favorite place ever. Like seriously, it's so it's so beautiful. It's so great. It's amazing. Like my home, it's in like the southeast of Sydney. Oh my God. Okay. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
so fun. And we just got back at like six in the morning, both went to sleep. We woke up with like two. <laughs> and now I got like a seven hour train journey ahead of me to get to Kobe, because tomorrow is my night bus to Fukuoka for nine hours to fly to South Korea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> gonna start off with the wicked laugh of course always <laughs> were there times when you did your wicked laugh on any of those 88 oh absolutely there were times i was singing out loud not realizing i was rounding the corner into a small village and then i just absolutely accidentally terrorized some poor farmer in the middle of nowhere <laughs> shrieking evil laugh <laughs> you gotta make yourself laugh when you're alone in the woods you know totally <laughs> find humor in everyday moments can your laugh be heard in the woods I think, yeah, I usually would think I'm alone, and I would be surprised what people live in very rural areas, in the middle of nowhere, you know? Or bump into someone in a tent 20 yards away and not notice that they were there. Things out my head, I wish I'd seen. Now I just bought it through a bad dream. Well, I can come in a pot at the scene, but thank you, Jack Daniels. Oh, number seven, ten, I see a whiskey got me drinking. So there's lots of like uh, hit and miss awareness there. Mostly hit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely moments on the walk where, you know, brain floats around somewhere else and I forget to be present. Monkey mind. Totally. Floating everywhere. And you're embracing that monkey mind, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Shoe shopping in Don Quixote. How, how's that working out for you? You know, I just wish they had things in my size, but unfortunately, these don't even work as mittens. They would look nice as mittens, almost. Almost, yeah. Just, but almost doesn't quite cut it, does it? Something a little bit more casual. Something that says, you know, I'm a walking pilgrim. Something like this. Walking pilgrim shoes. You know, something that would that... I could really put 800 miles on, you know? A new 88 just across over the horizon, man. Yeah, there we go. There we go. With these babies. <laughs> or maybe a pair of Crocs for the walk, you know? That's totally awesome. Yeah, I did some Vipassana stuff in Japan, and it was once upon a time, but have you done that meditation retreats and stuff? Well, you, I mean... It's a retreat of a sort, but... There you go. It's there a you go. Retreat. Kind of similar to the ways you might go on the 88 pilgrimage. You can pass through smaller villages and towns, and it'll take you down side alleyways like this. No cars going down, really peaceful. I like it because it gets you off the, you know, the big major road. Beaten path. Yeah. So of the 88, you did, in Shikoku, you did the 88, the, the Notorious 88. I don't know why I'm calling it Notorious, but in some ways it is, right? What was the most notorious of the 88 for you? Um, there's a couple that are called Henro Kuragashi, the place where pilgrims fall. And I think the, the first one of them was a test, second one too, but the third one really was something that it took a lot of breath out of me. It was a it was a solid mountain hike up for I think two thousand meters, um, and it was no it, no, I'm totally wrong. Three thousand feet, a thousand meters um, from basically sea level starting, and you just wind your way up these switchbacks the whole way up, and it feels like you're just going up all day. Um, and that was a day where there was no real infrastructure there, so it was just a trail. So it was what snacks I brought with me. And the day before, all I'd eaten was the food that I'd brought with me to the hut I stayed at that night overnight. So I'm I'm going low on water, I'm down to a couple of peanuts and some like dried mango. Like, man, I just wanna sit and have a hot meal. And my pace was getting slower and slower as I was getting to the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's funny, you know, I get to the top and I feel like the, the hiker's high comes in, you know, that, that notion that I put so much of my body's effort into this that whatever I see is going to be beautiful. Even if it's just a rock and someone painted, you know, it's going to be the most stunning thing I've seen because I walked for, you know, eight hours to get up to it. Um, but, uh, you know, I get up there and the temple's beautiful and stunning and I sit to do my, my chants and my sutras and they're doing tree trimming that day. 
So there's guys on the trees with chainsaws going me, and I just had to laugh at the, the juxtaposition of this beautiful, peaceful place in the middle of the mountain and the tree trimmer guys on the chainsaws. They will find you. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of reminded me that you know nothing is that serious to you know to have some joy and jovialness to it. Right, so, you can't have it the way you want it all the yeah, time. That's nice. Just gotta have it the way you have it, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's nice. beautiful, Joseph. I'm glad you. That was the one you told us about. <laughs> Thank you. That's sweet. Right on.